We are having a conversation with Dr. Patricio Reyes. He is neurologist at Barron Neurological Institute in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Dr. Reyes, um, one usually associates Alzheimer's disease with loss of memory, but Alzheimer's is more than that. What is Alzheimer's? Well, uh, Alzheimer's disease is a form of brain degeneration. Uh, and the brain develops uh, lesions uh, such as uh, senile plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. It is usually accompanied by certain symptoms. That includes uh, memory loss, some difficulty with language, comprehension, understanding certain concepts, uh, as well as some uh, symptoms uh, associated with changes in behavior like depression, irritability, uh, anxiety. Uh, the third component is clinically is um, some difficulty carrying out the usual activities of daily living. The difficulty dressing sometimes, uh, checking our balancing the checkbooks, driving, or doing uh, regular work at home or at work. And, uh, and so these activities may decline as well. So there are three groups of symptoms that you usually uh, sort of look for in patients with Alzheimer's disease. So I guess w as it is with other diseases, uh, early intervention, early detection is important. But how can someone um, have an idea if loss of memory is an early stage of Alzheimer's or is just loss of memory? Uh. There's no question that as we get older, we also forget a few things. But the big difference between the normal aging process and Alzheimer's disease is the fact that in Alzheimer's disease, the symptoms affect the social and or professional function of the patient. Whereas in the normal aging process, uh, you, one may forget uh, a few events or episodes, but they're able to cope with the daily activities, they're so able to socialize and function professionally. And what does early intervention consist? Uh, what is early intervention? The, the best advice I could give is if there's a question, uh, that a loved one or a friend may have the symptoms is to seek medical attention so that the appropriate tests are done. Because there are many potential causes of what we call dementia, which refers to a group of diseases that are characterized by uh, uh, memory problems, behavioral problems, and the uh, difficulty uh, performing activities of daily living. And Alzheimer's disease is just one of them and happens to be the most common cause of dementia among the middle-aged and older population. And are, are there ways to avoid catching Alzheimer's? Uh, I don't think we have, we can say that at the moment we know uh, we can tell you uh, what we, we can do to avoid. But there are certain risk factors that uh, we know now that can increase the chance of developing Alzheimer's disease. Uh, for instance, and some of this we cannot control, but, uh, like for instance, the most common risk is advancing age. As we uh, get older, the risk for uh, uh, developing Alzheimer's disease increases significantly. Some, some people may have familial cases. Uh, it happens that the minority of cases may be familiar, familial. And so there are genes that um, may um, <clears throat> account for the uh, occurrence of Alzheimer's disease in certain families. So genetic is important, but only in a small percentage of population. Uh, <clears throat> diabetes is a risk factor, head trauma, uh, and uh, hypertension may be a risk factor as well. And I think uh, what we're trying to do now is identify more, more risk factors 
with the hope that by avoiding the risk or reducing the risk factors, we'll be able to reduce the, uh, um, the risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. Um, how about exercising the mind or appropriate food? Um, how does that affect? That has become actually a very important focus of um, research at present. And that's what we call the lifestyle changes. Nutrition is very important, I think. Uh, <clears throat> eating the right food, uh, keeping your health, uh, um, uh, maintaining good health, uh, <clears throat> reducing obesity, controlling cholesterol, uh, avoiding foods that increase your blood pressure, uh, avoiding uh, diabetes, and if you have diabetes, you need to control your sugar. Physical and mental activities are very important as well. Socialization is very important. Um, <clears throat> so there are certain uh, non-pharmacologic, meaning uh, techniques that we can employ, for instance, that do not require medications. Uh, eating the right fruits and vegetables, for instance, uh, there's uh, quite a bit of research going on on the use of certain uh, 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 foods, um, omega-3 fatty acids, certain fruits and vegetables, uh, <clears throat> and uh, certain diets that may uh, reduce the risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. It looks very much as the same one would think about preventing a coronary sickness or disease? I think, as, as a matter of fact, I think we learn a great deal from uh, uh, cardiovascular medicine. And, and it happens now uh, that uh, increased cholesterol is um, uh, also considered uh, a, a, a risk factor for uh, Alzheimer's disease in certain cases. Uh, we don't have the exact proof for that, but uh, some uh, clinicians would um, uh, prescribe, for instance, cholesterol-lowering agents uh, to lessen the risk. But we don't have the exact evidence, uh, definitive evidence, that it reduces the risk for Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Reyes, thank you very much for sharing these ideas with us, and thank you very much.